Ja holāma lāk. Olāma, olāma. Ja holāma lāk. Jā, mēs. Rākīs. Ja holā gadolma. Makērī un tījās. Ja holā ierunāja. Ja holā ielohīm. Kurios tījās pēntā kvētā. Kurios tījās pēstās. Elē et ja holā. Elē munā ja holā. Ibas Lian Kurios, Otios, Opanta Kvete. Bas Lios, Bas Lian Kai Kurios, Kurion. Jehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Jehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Kebura. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion Im Hagion Panta Kvete. Gadol, gadol, gepura. Jehova ish malkam, Jehova shamma. Elna kum Jehova, elna kum japa. Netzak Israel la sheker, gava, gava. Triembos Jehova, Isus Christos, panta kreta, gadol, gadol, gepura. Moraros Nasa, Elohim, Elohim. Ileila Yeshalut, Yehovah Malak. Yehovah Malak, Olam, Olam Ad. Yehovah Elohenu, Yehovah Ekad, Gadol, Gadol, Geber. Zohan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes. Dikaesune, Nisus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Panta Kreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Ehova Ige Elohim, Ehova Ige Elohim. Ileilai Shalut, Jesus Christos. Ehova Malak, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Derek. Emunā bakār, mešpārt, šāvā. Da megalogai of jāvē elelijām elohīm. Is always alive and powerful. Šāpa than any two-edged sword. Pierce and even to the dividing the center of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the man. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself for prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, an inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, sit Keno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing the privileges what Lord God the Father has given for every sinful mankind on the face of the earth to be transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear beloved Son, making up our lives to the knowledge of Bible doctrine and winning the things which Lord God the Father has intended for us in it would pass to be our life. So use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us. On today's date, in it would pass to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique wonders of His Word. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, 
once again coming into the grace of Lord to learn the truth. As we come to study the mind of Father, we pray, Lord, God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's day to the past. For the praise of your glory in your matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. In Christ's name we ask sovereign Lord. Amen. In Exodus chapter 19, as we were looking yesterday, the place from where we have been brought departed from the Raphidim and were come to the desert of Sinai. The word desert over here is called to be Midbar, which is nothing but the, ple the people where they don't have doctrine. And on the face of the earth, the first divine oracles being committed was for the people of Israelites who were the recipients of that great privilege to have this word of God and to keep it. They had such a great privilege in understanding. So their every viewpoint of thought in their body should have been associated with innovated with doctrine. That's the thing which they have to make up and do the things to be happening when they have been given a proper place of rest. Because the word Raphidim over here, what we can look, it is nothing but a resting place. And here, when we can understand that resting place, it is nothing but no matter whatever may be a problem on this earth, renovating your thought to get every thought into captivity for Christ, that would be the only source of resting place on the face of the earth. When you get every thought into captivity for Christ, that's where you're going to get your rest. But today in the present Christendom, people are not happy to face the truth as John chapter 3 emphasizes for us in making the points to know. He says over here in John chapter 3, in verse number 19, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And here you can find the word condemnation meant to say, this is the judgment, creases. And what is that judgment he would call? Looking upon your thought process in the viewpoint of your soul, which is not able to have the word of Lord God. He calls that to be a judgment, mishfa. And that will lead for you all to further emphasize, called to be as a controversy, the word meant to say dispute. And what is the dispute? That your thought process in your head and in your body has to be renovated. You know, the real dispute comes when your thought process is not able to be in the Word of Lord God. When your body is not able to align yourselves to the Word of Lord God. So this is the condemnation what Lord God the Father would give and judge upon us. He says, your thought process do not match the Word of God. Your body is not aligned to the holiness of God. That's what the right condemnation is all about for us on this earth. And that God, the Holy Spirit, would love to come back and reprove us of the things which have been mentioned in John 16. The very first thing for unbelievers is that they don't have Christ. After, when they believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the only thing what that God, the Holy Ghost, could make for believers is get to their senses. This condemnation and this condemnation is nothing but to look your every viewpoint on your head to be renovated to look upon every body or the things which is a body has been acting if it is not able to get back to the truth or to the mind of Christ then he says this is what the condemnation I have against you so if you're not able to get the truth if you're not able to make up the truth to be a true life then for sure you're going to be condemned so now he says, this is the condemnation. Your renovation in your body, it is not aligned with the word of Lord God. It is not able to have the thought process applicable to the word of Lord God. Because day by day, the people over here on the face of the earth, if you can look, they are happy to spend their time in vanity. That's what they look to spend their time in vanity. People don't want the truth. The truth has become for them as well as to say like a bitter, like a poison. 
because they don't understand the truth which has been given for them is the real life being mindful about the life after death that they were wise enough to consider the later man but truth has become for them like a bitter in every nick and corner people are just simply happy to get associated themselves with daubing of untempered mortar the word called lies where will they get the place of refidim where will they have the souls in the rest because when the light is been given for them they have been called to look and understand and judge themselves that in them there is no darkness at all they that walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit and you may say what is that darkness you know people may call luxury but i call it as a lust because you cannot build up your happiness on someone else's unhappiness all the days of this life and why it has been called to as a lust because these people will never realize how much of your time you have to dedicate to the truth every day two hours 40 minutes of your time people are not at all happy for that they don't even look on those terms people when they find to tell the truth has to be told for them people will never love to look upon the truth the reasons are very very simple as we can understand them because these people they will never want to come to the light therefore he says over here this is the condemnation this is the judgment and what is the judgment the judgment is very very simple because he says in simple terms emphasizing the point that their thought process and in their viewpoint of life which has been taken from their soul it do not have the word of god the thought process in their mouth will be all the time in their soul if we can look they do not have the word of god so what they have they have nothing but lies you know anything which you don't have aligned with the word of lord god you are not in the place of refidim but lord god in eternity past he has taken us from the place of refidim and is placing us now to be something in the wilderness of sinai that went to say what you have been kept in the places where there is no dark and how you have to shine he says over here in numbers chapter 24 when balaam is able to take a lamentation upon these people in the word lamentation the sense the thing which he has been hired to curse but now you look over here in verse number 1 of numbers 24 you said when balaam saw that it pleased the lord to bless israel he went not as at the other times to seek for enchantments the word enchantments is nothing but your brother and called to say nakash divination and divination is nothing but to make up the bigger and valid to build like a wall of fortification in the thought process so that they talk about lies they live about lies and they make lies as the refuge you know this enchantments or divination what satan does it may prosper you it may give you success it may make this it may make that but the truth is not there in that so the wall of fortification in the bigger and valid and in the thought process they do not match so they come for this process called to be as nakash enchantment so he says like the previous time he is not going for enchantment so that you want to make up your vigor and valor to be built up in a wall pro- you know in a wall of thought of process which is not in accord with the word of god so now he says he is not going for divination but rather now he is setting his face towards the wilderness and the word of here for wilderness dear brother is called to be again midbar and here we have been taken out from refidim and you are placed in to the wilderness of sinai when you are placed in refidim what happens you have been given the place of rest where you come to take up your thought process to be renovated as per the demands of the word of lord god that's what the refidim is all about it's a resting place but from there on we have taken up and are given to the places what we can call in simple words as wilderness now even here balam has taken his eyes from the people that is called to be from the divine enchantments or divinations now he is concentrating those things upon the terms what we can call as wilderness so now we we'll look what does he say the wilderness is what what we're going to stay now in the present world where we don't have doctrine because people have been not interested to come to that light and expose their deeds because the deeds are evil and they are not happy to look upon the truth because truth is as bitter as them therefore apostle paul said in Gen- in galatians chapter 4 i speak the truth therefore i became your enemy you know that's what today people are people don't want the truth people don't want to live a life of a truth if the truth could say every day carry your cross and come back and become disciples of the lord and savior jesus christ they don't want to look upon that 
the truth is being taken away and they think dobbing them with untempered mortar telling lies making up the lives to be the standards of this earth they think that's enough that's more than enough that's more than sufficient but they never want to take upon the standards of the truth because people don't love to expose the deed so they're not able to realize they are in the terms of the wilderness so here when we can look balam he set his face towards the wilderness that is he's looking upon the thought process in authority and then he looked what it could be for them if we have been taken from refugee and placed in the wilderness how our life should be so now he says balam lifted up his eyes and he saw israel abiding in the tent the word shakin meant to say what it is the thought process in their life should be all the time like grammatias it is not just like the process of what we can call as just a disciple because even disciples if you can look you are born again as a disciples in the lord and savior jesus christ from there your real work is to grow up into grammatias that's what the real purpose of your life is you get married and you just say it's enough no you go further for your process of what we can call your procreation and then making the children again to see the things pertaining to your life you know all these things and many people will not realize that it is not just like a discipleship program to be joined in the lord but you have to be something great than that call to be growing up as grammatias it is not just coming here to carry a cross and become the will of god but growing up into grammatias that's what after marriage you've been called further to take up your time into many many great and super things that's what you need to work take up your time into many many great and super things which have been called over here on this earth because you have to grow up you have to increase you have to make up your thoughts to be very very accurate in the standards of the lord's mind because this is what people are trying to do on the face of the earth they're not able to have the truth they're not able to understand the truth because they're not at all happy to know the truth is like a fire you know if it love to catch a fire the way how the things will happen for it to be burnt up so is the truth truth will always put you in fire always truth will try to put you in fire it will burn you out it's like a blazing torch therefore in leviticus chapter 6 we have been said the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar it shall never go out but today what are the trends where they have been relaxed they have been relaxed not in the grammatious program they have been relaxed to come weekly ones to the church if needed multi monthly ones to attend the church or yearly ones to come as the christians called to be christian or christmas or festival christian so dear brother you can look how balam lifted up his eyes because and he sees the israel abiding the word called to be shakain in the tribes in his tents according to their tribes that meant to say what every 12 tribes we look upon the chapter of genesis 49 how jacob blesses them you can find them the way and the categories how they're capable of achieving this great success in life in genesis chapter 49 if you can look he goes to give a great discourse upon how his sons will be taking up into the arrangement of the work for what they have been called so he would say calling all the people together in genesis chapter 49 his children he says you sons of jacob here and to israel your father and then he said ruben you are my first born you are my might and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity the excellency of power and then he said what are you unstable like water you shall not excel because you went up unto thy father's bed you defiled thou it went up to my couch you know he's telling how this 12 tribes actually should have been when balam is blessing them in numbers but now here you look already the way the characters of them is been mentioned the same thing with you and me as well but now the characters what christ the lord of god called is that you are no longer the same one of the old standards but you are called to be something new in christ you have been called something to be great in christ 
So our characters over here, they resemble for something which have been made now a new creation in the image of Christ. So there are no excuses or alibis to be like this word, what is says, unstable as waters. The people unstable ones will be the ones who never open up their mouth to build a wall of fortification, to renovate and dig and take the Lord's mind every day. These are unstable people. Therefore, the same thing is said in Second Peter chapter 3. They that are unlearned and unstable, that meant to say what are not firm, or not firm in gathering the word of Lord God every day. That's what he would say, the unstable and the unfirm. And what they do? These people will always have scriptures to be used or wrestle the scriptures for their own destruction because they will never become disciples. You know, the same thing over here, the character, the might, the firstborn son, what we can call Israel to be the firstborn, and the way how we have been called now to be the firstborn of kinekitesis of new spiritual pieces in the Lord, how we have to be accurate enough in handling them, in making them. But here you say you become like unstable of waters. Because your mouth, when you open up, it is not to build like a wall of fortification in digging deep down into the word of Lord God. So he says, you're unstable like waters. You know, that's what people are not able to realize, how much they're unstable. So here we can look upon the characters of these tribes, though Balaam is able to look upon all the tribes being ten. And then he's going to look upon them and bless them. But here we can look and understand, it is not of that character. Here the tribes, what is mentioning first, the people, Reuben, what is instable as water. Because he said, you shall not excel. That meant to say what, you will not have your umbilical core of relationship with Lord God. Because your thought process is not being able to become what we can say as renovation in Christ. You know, the people who don't come to become as a thought process to be as renovation in Christ, the word of Lord God calls, these people are unstable as water. And that's how people are all the days of this life, unstable as water. But if you can look and understand, even we the Christians are becoming like the same footsteps of Reuben. You have all the twelve tribes traits. We look if it has been positive towards the word of Lord God, okay, great blessing. But here you can look how it will be negative all the time. Because you people are having the old sin nature, you people are not able to realize the blessings of Christ from the spiritual standards of the heavenly realm. That's what we in Ephesians 1. The blessings of the spiritual realm, what we have been given. But these people are so simple and they're so happy to look upon into the standards of what these unstable categories of men would be. So here he says, unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went to step to the father's bed. You defiled though it went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi a brethren. He says you are instruments of cruelty, Kamas. And the word over here, Kamas, what we can look, is nothing but their brethren as the wall of fortification which they built. No matter what may be the pressure in this life, these are called to be as Kamas. And then he would say that these are, and they are in their habitations. And then, O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, my honor, be not the united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. You know, this is saying about these people, the way how they were together, because they go along in the sister matter of Dina, and they slew the Santa Shechemites. The same thing over here, what we can look. So here he says, cursed be their anger, because that anger is not able to be renovated, and they have not been so zealous. But here if we can find the way how these people, they were zealous, if the same thing would have been in saving the souls rather than slaving the man, it would have been a great effort. Because we look over here, the twelve tribes, the twelve characters of them, and in them, if we can look upon the viewpoint of a human being on the face of the earth, they can realize up to what extent these people could have been worthy enough in saving the souls. The same category of the things that which you can save the souls. So, dear brethren, he would say, cursed to be their anger, because these people in the secret, they went to their assembly, and then they went along unto their assembly, mine honor, be not the united, for in their anger they slew a man. So he says, Simeon and Levi, three tribes of Ghana. Now he comes to Judah. Judah, the what whom thy brethren shall praise. 
thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, the father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp for the prey, my son. Thou art gone up, he stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rose him up? You know, Judah is the person who is going to interfere over there. In the case of uh, Joseph being taken into the down pit, he would say, why do you want to kill them? You know, he says, okay, come, let's sell him to the process of these people. So here you can look, jo Judah is a lion's whelp for the prey. My son, that you are gone up, he stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rose him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver, from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto all the gathering of the people. And then he says, binding his foal unto the wine, and his ass called unto the choice wine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. And then he says the description about this great Judah, how it would be, how to the characters of that and we can find these characters in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if these are the characters over here then you cannot be saying that I belong to this tribe I belong to that tribe we belong to only one tribe Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you have to reflect back upon this how your brethren shall praise thee and what for they shall praise thee it's not the brethren but the angels who shall look upon your battle, who shall look upon the standards of your life, and who shall make upon the life that have been associated to be for you on this earth. So he would say in simple terms, emphasizing that you shall look, and you shall be praised. The hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. What is the neck? The viewpoint of their life before they could come to the thought process and open up their mouth. You catch that neck. You catch the thought. You know, today if you can look upon it, the present Christendom, people are not able to catch the neck of their enemy. Because the enemy, like a roaring lion, if you can look, is out of energy in the body, is not able to become what we can call in simple terms as catching or knowing or recognizing the other enemy. If you know doctrine, you can know from where Satan is trying to come up. But since you don't know, since you don't have this doctrine, you people can't understand up to what extent the neck Judah can take care. Judah can place the hand of the neck of an enemies, a father's children. And then he said, they shall bow down to you. That's what we can look upon in the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Judah is like a lion's whelp. It goes to erect a structure day by day to renew its thinking because these are the aerial of God as we read in Isaiah chapter 29 verse number 14 be or 7 because there is no fight, no munition, or no distress that could go to be against this Judah. So he would say, Sadak, Matsod, and Sukh, no pressure upon your body, no pressure upon your every thought, no pressure upon the people who are going to become like a grammar case program in the Lord God. So he would say, this is like a lion's whelp. And then for the prey, from the prey, my son, you are gone up, he stooped down, he coached as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rose him up? Because he says the first one from the prey, which has been called over here as the word as terap, and the meaning of the word terap is nothing but their soul in the renovated head in their mouth will be to the standards of doctrine. But here he said, you are like a terap, my son. And then he would say, you are gone up. That is like a discipleship program in your process. And then he would emphasize the point saying that he shall stoop down. That is the bending of the leg when stooping. And that's when to say you will be like a grammatious program, renovated in your head to get into the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. And he couched as a lion. That is, he has made his head and his body to be no matter what may be the pressure as a lion. And then he would say that as an old lion. And then who shall rise him up? That is, he has been having the characters of what the great zeal of Lord God the Father want. Because he wants to catch the neck, he says. But now here we have, it is not about the neck, but here it is trampling down Satan under your feet. It's not just the neck process now. It's been making up the trampling down of Satan under your feet. So here when we can look upon these verses, what we can find, the way how here, the representing what Judah is all about, here every believer has to be in such great realm because he has been put for us all power and authority because he would say over here in first corinthians 15 emphasizing the word in verse 24 when he have put down all rule and all power and all authority because he shall deliver the kingdom to god so he says that he is the one wherewith lord god the father has put upon him so he says 
they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of boredom is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord God. So Judah was being chosen to illustrate for us that they shall be not like the spirit of boredom that has been there in the midst of us, but rather they would be like that ang lion and great lion who goes to do the will of Lord God the Father. So he said again in Revelation chapter 5, who is this? He would say, weep not, the lion of Judah, the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And the word what we can look upon, he stooped down, he says that, even in Numbers chapter 23, if you are able to read, he would say, Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, lift up himself as an ang lion, and he shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the sign, because this people will be like the blessed ones. And the same thing what we are able to look upon from Numbers chapter 24 as well. In verse number 9, he says, He coached, he lay down as a lion and as a great lion. Who shall stir him up? Blessed is that blessed thee, and cursed is that cursed thee. Because these are the people where with Lord God the Father wants every person. Reuben, he says, unstable as water. Simeon and Levi together, they have made a secrecy to slay, he says, to slay the people. But now if we can use that to save the people, what a great benefit it would be. And all have been given something great caliber like Judah. Judah, if it has been able to do it in the past dispensation, but now we have been given the caliber like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to execute this. So he says, he shall have his hand upon the neck of your enemies. And what is that neck? To look into the viewpoint of your life, what you have been, innovation in your thinking, and how you open up your mouth. So you'd say, neck of your enemies. And what is that enemies? Anyone who loves to put pressure like a lot of energy upon your body. So he says, he's just going to trample them out. Because he would say, the father's children shall go down. Therefore, Judah is a lion's whelp. And then what is the word lion's whelp over here? That meant to say, well, it constantly goes to sojourn in renovating the thinking in the standards of Bible doctrine. And then he would say from the prey, my son, you are gone up. The word prey meant to say what? No matter what, there may be a distress upon your soul, upon your head and upon your viewpoint of life. You are going to simply go up. That meant to say what? You're going to ascend overcome them by becoming disciple oriented to this program of viewpoint of life and he stooped down that is what like a grammar when he's going to come to become the word of Lord God to be renovated in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine he stooped down he coached that is no matter what will be the pressure upon his body is going to renovate it and then he would say he couched as a lion like the word Ariel, what we can look at expression of joy in the body. And as an old lion, what is the old lion? Like a disciple oriented in your body. And then he would say, who shall rise him up? Or from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, is there any blood on the face of the earth that could walk against such people who are able to become lion or old lion or are going to become the lion's whelp? So, you know, what a great blessing we have in the tribes of the Israel. Therefore, Judah in Revelation 5, we can look upon the man who comes from the tribe of Judah, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When Christ, the Lord of God, was born from the tribe of Judah. You know, maybe these are the characters which we have to look and inculcate. First to look, though it has been compared to all the tribes, and the Israel may have 12 tribes, but now we are only for one tribe, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he belongs to the tribe of Judah. And here we can find the characters of him, how he is going to become. The first one he would say to emphasize that, he will be like a person who is going to become in his soul or in his head, in his mouth. He will not be disturbed or distracted at all because he will be all the time ascending up as a viewpoint of discipleship program. You know, people may love to have many uh, signs of uh, zodiacal signs and they want to look upon what will be the characters and the traits of a person who has been born as a Leo or Scorpio or Taurian or whatsoever it is, you know. They think they have those characters. But really, dear brethren, the only one character what Lord God the Father has given for is the discipleship orientation of character. When you have been becoming a disciple oriented of character, there is nothing that can really hinder you. Because when you're disciple oriented, he would say that in furthermore, that you have been gone up and you have been stooped down, that is, you are growing up into grammatias from discipleship program to not thinking in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. And then he would say, he couched as a lion, that is, his head and in his body will be to all the time, no matter what may be the pressure, he would simply be like a lion. 
and he will be like an old lion. And the old lion is nothing but their body will be all the time disciple orientation, going and making disciples. And as a lion, no matter whatever it is, his head will be renovated to the standards of Bible doctrine. So he says, who shall rise up against him from the rising of the sun to the going of the sun? in your blood is there anything that goes against the word of lord god to say that this is what your life is all about is there anything it's not at all possible for us to be so so dear brethren you have to work the characters the things pertaining to the tribe of judah what lord and savior jesus christ comes he gives this is what your life is because there's something more more than what this thing pertaining to the tribe of Judah could be. You're something greater than that. You're something unique than that. So, dear brethren, he would further emphasize over here to teach the point, saying that the scepter shall not depart. The word scepter and to say, your body, in your thought process, in your soul, will be like the process, what we can call as Shabbat. And the meaning of the word Shabbat, your thought process in your body and in your soul, will be all the time to become what we can call in simple terms as that we shall not depart from Judah. So no matter what may be the pressure upon your head, he would say, it will not depart from Judah. So dear brethren, he says, emphasizing the point, that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver, that meant to say what the prescription demands of the word of Lord God should be taught. The people of Levi should have done, but now those people have failed. But at least the lawgiver, the one who rules according to the truth will ever be in that field. So he says from between his feet until Shiloh, that is the word Ragel, what we can find, he is said to be erected structure in the discipleship program. And then he would say over here, until Shiloh come, the word Shiloh over here near brethren, it is nothing but to say the tranquility which belongs. And what is the trust of tranquility or prosperity? Until your thought process could be once again as discipleship program, no matter whatever it is. Shiloh will come. Until Shiloh comes, what will be? Your thought process should be all the time associated with discipleship program. That's what your real life is all about. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, neither a lawgiver from his feet. Until Shiloh has come, and unto him shall be gathering of all the people. You know what a great blessing it is to be enjoying your life in the tribe of Judah, under the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, these are the characters what we need. When Balaam is able to look into the wilderness where it has been set up, now he's taking up a great blessing part from Numbers 24, verse 2 through 9, and he says what these people will be. So he has seen all the tribes taking into rest. When he's been able to take up all the tribes being considering to be in that resting process in the wilderness, he knows now these people have been called for such work. The work from where they were entered the past of Rephidim into the work of what they can do in the wilderness of Sinai. They've been called to such a great work. But now we can look, they failed in that thought process, they failed in that work. So he would emphasize over here to say that. Reuben, the tribe of Reuben, will be unstable as waters because they've never come to the word of Lord God. They're not able to expose their life in the deed of the word of Lord God. Simeon and Levi, for their anger, they've been cursed. They secretly enticed to kill. So he said, these people are such and such characters. Rather than living, if they would come back to make up them to be saved, the things would have been very, very different. And then I would say, because of this curse, he goes now to say about the standards of Judah. In the time of Judah, he can look how he is. He's been said, your brethren, whom the brethren shall praise thee. You're going to have the hand of you in the neck of your enemy, because your viewpoint of life will be innovated to the standards of your mouth to be for doctrine, and they shall be like the enemies in the neck. You're going to catch up on every aleph energy of the thought process in the body which they get so he further goes to emphasizing he coached as a lion because uh, sorry he says that your father's children shall bow down to thee because bowing down to christ is enough rather than bowing down to men so they would have done that so judah is a lion's world where he would say is an aerial to have great expression of joy in his body because they're going to erect a structure 
a structure of renovation in Bible doctrine. That's what they love to do. That's what they love to perform it. And then he would say emphasizing that this, for from the prey, my son, you are gone up. The word prey is nothing but your soul and in your head to be renovated when you open up your mouth towards Bible doctrine. So it says from a prey, my son, that is the vigor and valor of your body, you are gone up. That is, you have to be all the time in the viewpoint of discipleship program. That's how we're going to make it up. So, and then he would say, emphasizing that he stooped down. That is, he became like the person of Grammatius to be renovated inside in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. And then he would say further, he coached as a lion because he knew now, no matter what may be the pressure upon your body, he's going to renovate their head in Bible doctrine. That's what he coached now. That's what he did now. So he would say emphasizing that's what he has coached. That's what he has been emphasized. He coached as a lion because he knows the great expression of joy will be for them who are been all the time in the process of making this life to be associated in the standards of what we can call in simple terms as no stress, as no fight or no munition against such such men who have been associated in that realm of this lion-oriented category. So he would say emphasizing that this people will be all the time stooped down because he coached as a lion. That is, he's going to be, no matter what may be the pressure upon his body, he'll be all the time towards Bible doctrine. Therefore, like an aerial is going to be. And then further he would say, and as an old lion, that is, if he's been as an old lion, that meant to say his body has been constantly disciple-oriented and he has in him the mark or a zeal of a seal to say that his disciple oriented. And then he would emphasize the point saying that, who shall rise against him? Is there any blood that goes against him? Therefore, these people, he said, they shall be like a scepter. So once again, in Genesis 49, in verse number 9, dear brethren, Judah is like a lion, because that is nothing that a weapon that is formed against them will ever prosper. And the word of Judah over here, it has been praised with thanksgiving, because he's going to make up his body all the time in his hand to write the word of Lord God, to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So here he would make up to use his hand in getting every thought into captivity for Christ. When you make that, you're going to be like a lion's whelp. So what happens? You're going to erect a structure to the renovation standards of Bible doctrine. That's what you have been called. Because you are still looking into the fourth tribe. You have been still called. And then he said, From the prey, my son, you are gone up. The word prayer over here, your soul and your head in your mouth to be renovated for doctrine. But you have been not there because you have been taking up to the process of becoming disciples, which is the number one priority. So from the prey, my son, you have gone up. That is, there is no way the people who can make up to say that we will try to destroy your soul or we'll try to destroy your thinking or we'll try to destroy your mouth because you have already taken up to destroy the prey by becoming to be as ascending as discipleship program to the Lord. So he said he stooped down. He became like a grammatius in his viewpoint of thinking. He coached down. That is, no matter what may be the pressure, he simply gave the viewpoint of Bible darkness number one priority. And then as an old, he coached up as a lion because he knows there is nothing. And as an old lion who's been associated with doctrine, so he would say, who could rise up against me? From the rising of the sun to the going of the sun in his blood, who shall rise up against me? So now if you look furthermore, dear brother, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet. You know, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. What is that scepter, dear brethren? We emphasize their body and in their thought process to their soul. They shall be like the standards which shall not depart from Judah. That means they will be all the time like a ruling man. And that's what every Christian is called, to be like a ruling one in the Lord God. The scepter shall not depart. And then he would say, neither a lawgiver, because the prescription demands of the word of Lord God, they'll be all the time established. And then he would say, the, uh, from between his feet, until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people. So he said, this one is going to be in such a way. Because first of all, he has gone through training process. He has been given enough potential to take the neck of his enemy and to trample it down under our feet as we look in the church age. And then Judah is going to be like a lion's whelp because there is nothing that can form against him because he's having an intention to grow. Now it is thinking like the word of Lord God. And from the prayer of my son, you are gone up. That meant to say what? The people who want to destroy your soul or want to destroy your, your thinking, or you want to destroy your mouth. They are nothing because you're going to easily ascend up because 
You have taken up the course or the path like discipleship program. And then he stooped down and said, what he has taken the route like a grammatious program. And he coached up as a lion and said, what no matter what, maybe the pressure, any pressure, any financial pressure, any physical pressure, any mental pressure, any pressure of relating with emotions or the stress or the things pertaining to whatsoever the love life or the anything what they could be. He says, these things are not going to hurt him because he's been couched up. The word coach over here meant to say rabats because he has made up his wall of fortification in such an extent that there is nothing that can be against his body to be put in pressure. There is nothing he can put. So dear brethren, he would say, emphasizing the point that he has coached up as a lion. What does a lion do? Any fight or any distress or any munition, they can do nothing. And as an old lion, that is, he has been all the time disciple oriented in his body. Therefore, who shall rise up against him? So there is nothing here you find the stability of your life. If you can become like this lion's whelp, so that the prey, your soul and your head and your viewpoint of life, you have nothing to do it. Because these people who have been given this word as things pertaining to to be taking up or to be taking up as a prey, they know very well their soul and their head and in their mouth. They can never associate to disturb you or to make up because you have already taken the root of what we can call as lion's world. You go to like a structure to the viewpoint of thinking, Bible doctrine, that's what I've been called. So he says, you have been given to such of a lion's world. If you take this, there is nothing of a prey that can come up against you because you are taking up in the viewpoint of discipleship program. Therefore, if you have this power, such a great wealth Lord God the Father would give for us, then how much more we in John 1, 11 and 12 have been told, they that believe upon Christ, they have been given the power to be called the sons of God. You know, we have this great blessing, we have this great privilege, we have this great power to understand. We have been told to make up ourselves to be a great blessing in Christ. But what we are looking today, we are not able to understand what a great blessing we can be for Christ. Because every time the will of Lord God the Father is to make sure we are going to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit every time. It's a very, very big and great blessing for us. So he says that you have been called to be disciple. If you have been being as a disciple, John 1, 11 and 12, then you can have these characters of Judah. You know, the place over here, then he would say, capital shall not depart. You will you, you'll be stooped down when it shall become like a grammatious. You will be caught as a lion that meant to say what, no matter what, may be the pressure upon your body. You will be simply able to overcome them as a lion, as an old lion having your mouth to be associated with the discipleship program. And then he said, who shall rise up against such a man? That's what every believer is called right now in the church age. Like confirming to the image of Christ, we're walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So he said, the ruling power shall not depart from Judah, neither a lawgiver from between his feet unto Shilah. Come, and then he said, unto him shall be gathering of all the people. Now he says, binding his fall. The word binding meant to say, no matter what, maybe the pressure upon his head. His fall is nothing but distorted thinking in his head. Unto the wine. That is, the things pertaining to what they have erected in the structure of this world, in their mouth and in the vigor and valor. And as an ass called, that meant to say what, putting in authorities, vigor and valor. And the word called is nothing but again, again, the word meant to say like Ben, which is called to be the vigor and valor in his body. So he says, he's going to make up his ass called to the choice wine. The choicest one is nothing but the people, the best of the best of the brains in this world, where they think they have better information, but the person who has been associated with doctrine, he knows what is the better information. So he would make up, no matter what may be the pressure in his head, from the rising of the sun to the burning of the sun, he would be like the choice wine. He washed his garments, because he has become like a grammatist in his body, no matter what may be the pressure. He has made his labesh, his garments over here, it's not bagad. And this labesh over here, dear brethren, it is nothing but to emphasize that their body will be all the time disciple-oriented and we know where they're thinking in the thought process. So he says that he has made them to be as washed his garments in wine. Again, the word, no matter what, may be the pressure, every day is going to take a pot of blood card and his clothes under any pressure and authority in the blood of grapes. And the word over here, blood of grapes, is nothing but making up in the blood to be the viewpoint of vigor and valor of Bible doctrine. 
So he says that the clothes in the blood of grapes. And then he would say what? His eyes shall be red with wine. Because he's been now looking into the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. So he would make up all the time as building up a wall of fortification, grammatious program and discipleship program on this earth. When you grow up into grammatious program, then you can make up your discipleship program to be number one. So you would make up to be like a wine. Or the word over here you can say his eyes shall be as a red wine all the time burning inside to become a disciple and making disciples or growing up into grammatias and in return going and making disciples of all the nations. And his teeth, this thought process in his head, will be white as milk. Again, the word Laban, which is nothing but to be pure or to be make to be free from all materials which could be impurities. So he would make up to be like a white. So what happens in the process of becoming white? He would say, emphasizing that the discipleship program in his body to be the vigor and valor. That's what you have been called over here to be like white. And how it will be white like a milk. And the word milk over here is nothing but Caleb. And the word Caleb over here is nothing but which has been filled with the richness of its kind. So he would say that he will be like a discipleship program, wall of fortification in his entire body. So dear brethren, what a great thing it is to be having the eyes, right? Which is for all the time as grammatious program in return going and making disciples of all the nations. And his teeth as white as milk. And his teeth with milk, as white it is. The things over here, dear brother, on what we look and understand about these four verses, or five verses from Genesis 49, the way how he has been giving, it's a very, very positive affirmation. And if every believer could come back to look, you have been able to relax in your tribes, then you should choose the tribe of Judah. And now, Father, we come to Zebulun. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be, shall be for a haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar is a strang oars counting down between two captubadans, and he saw the rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and become a servant unto tribute. So he says that the way how Issachar would be, and then Dan, he says, Issachar shall be, the rest was good, and the land that was pleasant, it bore on his shoulder to bear, and become a servant unto and to, unto his tribute. And now he says, Dan shall judge his people, and as of the tribes of Israel, Dan shall be as a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. And now he says, I waited for the salvation of the Lord, and then Gad, a troop, shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asia his bread shall be fat, and they shall yield royal danities. The word danities over here, dear brethren, it meant to say pleasure. And what is the pleasure? The word called to be madan, danities. And then furthermore over here he would say, emphasizing that Naphtali is a hind, let loose, let he giveth godly or goodly words. And then Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the wall, and the arches have sorely grieved him, and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and his arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of the Father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven, above blessings, above blessings of the deep that lie thunder, blessings of the breasts and of the wombs. You know, all these things are very, very important because he says how Lord God the Father would make everyone to understand how great they have to be associated with doctrine life. So he says that God of the Father who shall help thee and by the Almighty who shall bless with thee, thee with the blessings of heaven, our blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb, the blessings of the Father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the mount, unto the utmost bound of the blessings, bless, uh, bound of the everlasting hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of Joseph of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf in the morning, he shall devote the prayer and the night, and he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes. You know, he's going to give an explanation about each and every one. Apart from Judah and Zebulun, if you can look now, he says about Benjamin, what a character it is. Apart from that, the people of Naphtali, or what we can call the people associated to be Gad, or what we can be as Asher, or what we can claim to be as Dan. He goes to teach, even including Issachar, what sort of a people they would be and how much they would be associated with the work of Lord God. So he goes to say that, first of all, the word Issachar is nothing but a brother. 
the one meant to say there is recompense. What is the recompense? He said is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. That is what people is associated in any realm of such categories as well. And he says he saw that rest was good and the land that was pleasant and boast and bore his shoulder to bear and become a servant unto tribute. That is people who are minding earthly things that will be the fate of them. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. And then he would say emphasizing Dan shall be as a serpent or by the way an adder in the path that better the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backward. Now the power of the Dan, he said, he shall judge all the people and is one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be as a serpent by the way. Again the word Nakash, to be cunning with the cunning one. So he says, you shall be like the people called to be cunning enough because they have in all the time being able to make up the life for Christ because they have to, but we know these people have left the tribe. The tribe which has not been counted for them in the 12 tribes mentioned in Revelation chapter 7. So Dan shall be a serpent by the way, because to be very cunning in wisdom, the word serpent over here is called to be Nakash. Once again, the meaning of the word Nakash over here is nothing but your brethren, where they would make up the vigor and valor in the thought process of all the fortification to be associated with doctrine. So he said, these are the people who are in such a way. And now he says that this Dan will be like a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. And I says, I waited for the salvation of the Lord Gad. Now the meaning of the word Gad over here, it has been called as troop. So troop comes, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. So he says, furthermore, out of the ashes, which is meant to be as happiness, his bread shall his, his bread shall be fat and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hand, is called to say rustling is a hint let loose he giveth goodly words joseph is a fruitful bow when a when a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over all the well over the wall the arches have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hit at him but his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty god of jacob from thence is the shepherd the stone of israel and now he says this character so he said even by God of the Father, whom shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven, above blessings of the deep that lieth under blessings of breasts or of the womb. So he says, all these things, the blessings of the Father have prevailed, above the blessings of the progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him that hath separate from his brethren. And now he says about Benjamin, Benjamin shall rewind, and then he would say, as a wolf in the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. And these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is that the Father spake unto them, and blessed them everyone according to the blessing he blessed them. He charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people, bury me with their fathers in the cave. This is the field of Ephron, the Hithrite. You know, dear brethren, having a burning zeal for the word of Lord God, Rather having temporary flame, it is better to have an eternal blazing fire for Christ. So he said, this is what you have been made. So be careful to come back to understand the Lord's mind, because you have been given the twelve tribes. And the twelve tribes, what you have is very, very important, because he would go to emphasize the point saying that, when Jacob has made enough commanding these sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up his ghost and was gathered unto his people. So he says, what are your characters? How are your characters? So the best one, what we can be is like Christ emphasizing the tribe of Judah. In the tribe of Judah, we have many, many lessons to learn because we have been told day by day the importance of us such how we can be associated with uh, the true life when we have been able to when we have been able to make up our lives in the standards of his truth so now coming back to numbers chapter 41 here we can understand the way how these people have been told they lie down they lie down who all the tribes they relax how they relax when they make the thought process like a grammatical program in the presence of lord god the father then they can really lie down in rest that's the meaning over here when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel and went not as at the times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face into the wilderness, and Balaam lifted up his eyes, that is, his viewpoint of life, which what Lord God the Father has said to him is vigor and valor. Now Balaam looks upon his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding, you know, in his tents according to the tribes. That's what we have looked. 
the tribes of our Genesis 49, his own father goes to give blessings and the things pertaining to the characters and exposition of his mind. You know, many people don't understand about these things, what we have been calling over here to be every day in Christ. It's better for us to be like the tribe of Judah. Because there we find so many characters which have to resemble every true believer in Christ. That's what we have been called over here, every true believer in the Lord. But what we're doing, dear brother, we are not at all happy to find such true character in the Lord. Cannot. So he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Boar, had said, and the man whose eyes are open had said, he had said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but, he's have, but having his eyes open, he's falling into trance, but his eyes are open. How goodly are the tents. The word goodly over here, dear brother, meant to say that which is agreeable in his soul and his body. What the tents, the word called to be tents, where your body has been exactly, oh hell, meant to say. A great expression of joy as a discipleship program. Then only your body could be great. That's the word tent. And anywhere you can find the place on this earth to learn the word of Lord God, the expression of making up your body to be discipleship oriented, then it is called to be the tent. So he said, Jacob and thy tabernacles. Now he's recollecting back Jacob. And then he says, your thought process should be like a grammatious program in a vigor and valor. I thought you have been called over here to be for Christ. For bigger and valor you have been called over here in the sense of becoming that which could be as tabernacles of Israel. Because Jacob is the one what he said curse and Israel he said he defiled him. But now he says Jacob will be not in the process of a cursed one because his thought process has been renovated. Now his, his viewpoint of life from the rising of the sun to the end of the sun will be in the process of what we can call as the body to be associated to represent as we can say in simple terms as Jacob. But he says, curse are the people who are going to become like Jacob. And he said, blessed in the sense, in the sense, he said, the, 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 Balaam, the, the Balak hires to say, curse the people who come to Jacob and defy the people who are going to come to be like Israel. So he said, oh, Jacob are the tabernacles. And then he said, oh, Israel. Because he knows how goodly are the tents. I thought to curse you. I thought to make up to defy you. But you have been absolutely brilliant because you have been, your body has been used as a grammatious program in a given valor for Christ. That's what I've been called over here. And then he said, the people of Israel, that is what, no matter what, may be the pressure upon your head, you have to remember to like Bible doctrine. So he said, how agreeable are your tents, or Jacob, the tabernacles of Israel, as the valleys are they spread forth as gardens by the riverside, as the trees of Ling Oles. The word Ling Oles is nothing but great expression of joy as a discipleship program, which the Lord had planted as a seder besides the water he is going to give. What these people will be all the time, they will be like the valleys that have been spread forth, gardens by the riverside as the trees of Ling Oles, which the Lord had planted them, and as see the trees beside the waters. You know, all these things are very, very essential for the characters to know how much Lord God the Father has made us to be available for the work of Him on this earth. How much He has made us, how much He has been called us, how much He has been making up to the process of Bible doctrine on this earth. So, dear brother, and he would say, as the valleys, they have been spread. He goes on to give emphasis upon the point that these gardens, as by the riverside, by the trees of Ling Oles, which the Lord had planted, and as see the trees beside the waters. And then he said, he shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. The word Agag over here, dear brethren, it has been called as I will overtop the people who exalt themselves. That's what we find in Second Corinthians chapter 5 to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So he said, God brought him forth out of the Egypt. Again, the word God over here, referring back to Moses, it should be because 410 code, because this is the way how he instructed them with the knowledge of Bible doctrine. So God brought him forth out of Egypt. That's what we can look upon the word El as well, referring to God the Father. So he hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations of his enemies. You know, he shall eat up that when to say devour, how is going to devour a cow? The Hebrew word is nothing but he is going to make them grammatious program, not just disciples. He is going to make each and every believer to be not just as disciples, what Christ or Lord of God intended in Matthew 28, but he is having the power to go and make to, to go and become like a grammatious program and in return. 
coming and making disciples of all the nations. So it's a Akel. That's what he's been called over here, Akel. So God forth him out of the Egypt, as it were the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bounds and pierce them through with his arrows. Breaking up is nothing but he erect a structure to the viewpoint of renovated Bible doctrine in the blood. So that's what real breaking of the enemies will happen when you're able to make up to understand that it has to be all the time in discipleship program for Christ. So he shall break their bones and pierce them with their arrows. A wall of fortification against any treasure. He coached, he lay down as a lion, as a great lion. Who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth, and cursed is he that curseth. You know, there's nothing that can be against the word of Lord God to say for you all that you will be absolutely useless because the word of Lord God has blessed you. Satan would come to destroy you by his false teachings. But really, dear brethren, every believer has been so much blessed that he can really reside in the tabernacle or in the process of the word of Lord God and become the will of Lord God the Father in this church age. So dear brethren, when he said this word, he says he couched, the word couched is nothing but like a grammatist program and is had to be renovated in the report of Bible doctrine. He couched, he lay down as a lion and as a great lion who shall stir him up and he says blessed is he that blesseth thee and cursed is he that curseth thee. And such a great blessing what now Balaam is able to give upon the people who are called to be the tribes of the people of Israelites. And then you say, Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam and his smote his hands. And he said together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them as this three times. Therefore now flee thou out of my place. I bought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to the messengers which you have sent us against me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what the Lord said, that will I speak. You know, today many people are talking about the standards of their own mind rather than having the standards of the word of Lord God. So you would emphasize, dear brethren, further to say that. And now, behold, I go unto my people. Come, therefore, and advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the later days. He took up his parable and said, Balaam, thy son, son of Boar, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into trance, but having his eyes open, and I shall see him, but not now, I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Seth. And Adam and Edom shall be as a possession, Seir also shall be as a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do well and flee. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he, he took up his parable, and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his later end shall be that he shall perish forever. He looked of the Canaanites, and took up his parable, and said, Strong is their dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless the Canaanites shall be wasted, until Ashur shall carry thee away captive. He took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live and God doeth this? And his ships shall come from the coast of Shittim, and shall afflict Ashur, and shall afflict Abdab, Abed, and he shall he shall also and he also shall perish forever. Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. Because dear brother, and there is nothing who can curse this people, the people of Israelites, they will be only the people for blessing. So, dear brethren, you need to look. If we have such sort of a great blessing in the sight of Lord God the Father, then why can't we reside in the wilderness of sin when we have Raphidim to flow in us? Raphidim is called to be as a blessing. And what a great challenge we have to belong to the tribe of Judah. And being belonging to the tribe of Judah, we have so many great lessons to say when you ascend, when you stoop up, when you couch up to join as a disciple in the viewpoint of Grammatia's program and in return go and make disciples of all the nations when you have that. What a great principle we have over there to learn every day to such extent of everyday thought process. 
But what we're doing today, day by day, we're not able to have the thought process at all. So, dear brethren, this great reality, what we have been given day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, this great reality, what has been called for us to become as the tribes that shall have the great pleasure, he's going to give through Genesis 49 the importance of such how we will be blessed when we become to belong to the tribe of Judah. You know, that's a tribe where he would say all the time become disciples. A lion and the young lion and the old lion. Lion, he would say, have a great, result, great thought process in your body. And a young lion or an old lion, he would say, Ariel. And from there on, he would make up to be like an old lion. He wants your body to be disciple oriented every time you come. But today, people are not happy to expose their deeds in the light. Congregations are not happy to learn the word of Lord God. Congregations are not even able to realize the will of Lord God. And what we're doing day by day. Though we have been given much and expected much, we are not able to stand by the will of Lord God. They have been given this little 66 books to stand from to Christ, to erect their structure, to keep in Christ. That's what we were reading yesterday in Exodus chapter 19. Wobe, Shama, Wobe. And he said they keep. But he prayed for us, they have kept. Then how much more we should be faithful in abiding the word of Lord God. But people are not happy to expose themselves in the light of the word of Lord God every time they come. They are simply happy to make up their life in the process of what the world demands and not the word of Lord God. The so-called ministers and the so-called present, present Christendom, they haven't been happy to dig deep down into the word of Lord God. The so-called followers who come to the church are not happy to at least have a concern to look what exactly is the thinking of the word of Lord God. But when it comes to the time when these people are able to spend in search of vanity, in research of vanity, in research of luxuries and lusts, really it's very shocking to know because these people do not even worry the pain of my Lord God in the perishing souls. Having not to be worried about the things pertaining to the word of Lord God, they don't even have a time. But when it comes to the personal issues, personal property, they love to make the world upside down, getting to the standards of what we can call in simple terms, showing forth that man loves earth rather than heaven a lot. And they will never change. They will never accept the point. Because the great time they're investing every day, it will be for the lusts, and they think it will be useful for the lusts. And they say, we shall not take to any kind from the earth. We live all the things over here. They have this talk of morality. But they don't have the standards of what we can call in simple terms of reality, at least to look. The words what they speak, they match. No. They're still like a, a womb which has not been satisfied, a hunger womb. They still love to have many, many more things. But as far as the word of Lord God has been concerned, they don't even worry about that. They don't even look upon that. The cost of perishing souls are not important for them. Such are the ministers who are employed in our ministry today. And when the word of truth has been told, people don't even love to accept it because they are so happy to make up their life in the process of sin to be reigning in their lives. You know, as Cain was told, if you do good, if you do that which is good and acceptable in the sight of Lord God, Lord wouldn't have been such an anger upon you, or the curse wouldn't have been lying them upon your home. People, though the perishing souls are vanishing off, they want to make up their life for the things pertaining to stupidity as number one priority. And they don't realize the walls are crying out. If you make up such properties without giving first priority for God, the walls are crying out. What they're crying out with the pain of those perishing souls. You would have been really happy in making number one priority for the word of Lord God, but you can look how they have been banishing the life. 
how they have been making up their life to be banished. Because they simply love lies rather than truth. So dear brother, how many days more you still want to assist your life in the standards of this earth? What is this earth all about for you? They have been given to reside in the wilderness of Sinai, being taken from Raphidae. Why aren't you able to make up your life to become the word of Lord God accurately every day? And what are you going to get every time? Where is your accuracy? Will it be for the standards of this world? Or will it be for the standards of truth in Christ? And people are simply happy not to expose themselves in the light of the word of Lord God. They are not at all happy to be in the light of the word of Lord God, what the word of Lord God calls. Because many people right now on the face of the earth, they don't love the truth as they have to be loving the word of Lord God. Therefore, though the tribes have been given with such great powers, only we can find the tribe of Judah to be blessed so much. Because the remaining eleven tribes are not to be so much acquainted as discipleship program in the life of Judah is all about. Therefore, the name of Judah you can call to be praised. Every time they get, they come back to the standards of the Lord's mind. Praised and blessed are those people who will be disciples in Christ. And they continue their journey. Because those who are disciples oriented to become like a grammatist in the Lord God. No weapon that is formed against them, their head or their soul or their body. No weapon that is formed against them will ever prosper. So dear brother, and you can look up to what extent we have been really honoring the word of Lord God or making up our lives to be dishonored. By not knowing the great tribes which have been given in the past, and Christ the Lord of God comes from the tribe of Judah, he has those traits of him, the traits like a lion's world, all the time to a structure to the knowledge of Bible times. He has such a great trait for him. And where are we lacking today? We are lacking the truth to be taught. So dear brother, which way you want to go, you decide. Because life is too short for us to spend our time in search of vanity. And many people still on the face of the earth are thinking vanity to be realities. And still, though they have been given the great mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in this church church to be occupied in Christ, they have been given great many things for us to learn in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine on this earth people are not at all able to understand what a great reality it is for us when we walk in truth, a great blessing for us when we inculcate the standards of such truth. So dear brethren, think over these issues because though the light has come, there's a condemnation to the world that people have loved lies rather than truth. And what is that lies? <laughs> luxuries and lusts over the cost of perishing souls. That's what man's summary is all about. They have been given such sort of a great power and vigor and valor to know what a man you can be, what a man you can be, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit every day. Yet you can understand up to what extent these people will never look or never learn or never understand the importance of such great life to the word of God. Because luxuries and lusts are more at the cost of perishing souls. And people are happy for such perishing souls to be perished, rather than having the pot to become what the intention of the word of flood cut is all about. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, but the responsible to live him upon our shoulders is too large. So which way you want to go, you decide. 
as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, let us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite one, glorious grace. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would lead us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite one, glorious grace. So with our head poor and eyes closed, that was in being dedicated to those of the third parish without hope and without a small life. In order to learn to Lord God, the Father, the Paris of the soul, that the name of Christ, my Lord, my Lord, my Savior, that's not true, which love such no truth. The such no truth was so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. But as for the believer, the grace man to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. I will teach you and talk about the presence of the truth, the truth shall set you free, and for the past to teach us. The grace man to carry us out on the land. Herald the word in season, out of sin, because I'm out of my witnesses with them called. The number one time out of my witnesses in the infinity, if our Bible in our hands, and I'm out of them out of my witnesses, so hear us. If there are no hearers, they were nowhere besides nature, the entire and the cost were witnesses, and what is our work? Our work is to write to divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want over there, brother, and you decide, because life is too short for us to spend our time in vanity. Though you have been given such tribes information over here, like the tribe of Judah, where Christ or Lord of God would come, and catching the neck of your enemies, and making to trample down under your feet. What a great privilege we have, and yet why we shall die, not doing the desire of Lord God the Father to be fulfilled on this earth. As people love to fulfill their own desires on the face of the earth, rather than fulfilling the desires of Lord God the Father, so it is. Much of the present Christendom who don't wake up to fulfill the desires of Lord God the Father, but rather they are waking up to fulfill their lusts, not even having a single fear, a fear of an ounce. The grieving and the squelching ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit on your life, not even a single fear. How much you people are grieving or squelching or waxing or lying or resisting. Lord God, the Holy Ghost, in a day-by-day -day activity is on this earth. So, dear brethren, think about these issues. Life is too short for us to spend our time in vanity. And which way you want to go, you decide, because it's your life. If you want to still spend your time in vanity, you can make it up. But we have a lot many things to learn. As the word what we read over there in Genesis chapter 49, in one of the characters of Judah, he says in Genesis chapter 49, in verse number 9, he said that from the prey, the word prey over here, it is called to be as teraph, and the prey, what does it do? It goes to destroy your soul, it goes to destroy your thinking, it makes up to talk the viewpoint of men rather than God. When you open up your mouth, it will not be divine oracles, being seasoned with salt and grace in the word of Lord God. So he said the word pray, but for the people who have been disciple oriented, growing up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, they will really have a great many things in this earth to understand what a great life we have on this earth to be established day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because the praise will not work out. As such, we have been called to be greater than that. As conquerors in each and everything, what Lord God the Father has called for us in this church age. Because many people don't realize the power given to them. As such, what the word of Lord God should be. Because much of the power what has been given to them it is purely in the process of what we can call in the standards of Bible doctrine. And people don't understand about that. And yet, they become the stupid things of this life. As such, they become a prey. And they have been grieved in this life, but not knowing the capacity which God the Father has given through the Holy Spirit of God. So, dear brethren, think over these issues and enjoy your own inside. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, let us the praise of His glory 
in his matchless marvelous infinite divine and glorious grace we shall come back and continue tomorrow and which is your life you decide there may be some disturbances because there will be some disturbances over here in the wind or the sounds but if it is possible let's try to listen the word of lord god if lord god the father is leading you to know the word of truth we shall come back and continue tomorrow infinite divine holy father I grateful and thank you for this privilege of Lord to understand your words from the tribes of Israel of Genesis chapter 49 particularly your Lord what the tribe of Christ or Lord God could come from Judah the characters from verse 7 through verse 8 through verse number 11 and following teaching to us a great inspiration to be as such what we shall be in the Lord so father being grateful and thank you for this privilege we pray and enter minister of God God the Holy Ghost to enter in the challenge and to bless us because you have caused us to move from the place of refuge to the wilderness of sin and in the wilderness of sin we have to be the people to do that which is good in your sight rather than making our pleasures to be fulfilled so father for this great action we pray that lord god the holy ghost would enter and challenge and bless us by this message in christ my trust prayer is christian and we pray father that lord god the holy ghost enter and challenge us by these things in christ's name we ask for it amen